Thanks so much for tuning in to Giving a Voice to the Horses, a podcast hosted by me, Crystal Avera. We'll talk about things like my research on horse burnout, helping relieve and prevent stress in our horses. We'll talk about how horses help people manage our stress and how they help us heal and how we can honor the horse's needs while they help us. I will talk with other horse lovers and equine professionals who share my passion to ask the horses what they need. And together, we'll discover how things are changing and expanding regarding how people relate to and care for horses. After all, the horse is the master teacher. This podcast is made possible because of listeners like you. If you'd like to donate as little as $1 per month, please visit my website, crystalavera.com. That's C-R-Y-S-H-T-A-L-A-V-E-R-A.com. And click on Be a Patron. You'll see it in the top menu of my website. If you'd like to dig deeper and you want to join me and create a lasting transformation in your relationship with your horse while supporting this podcast, see my third tier patron option for $21 per month where you'll get all the benefits of being a patron as well as a subscription to my transform course. Above all else, this podcast is for the horses. Together, we make wonderful things possible. Horses in life, I have been blessed with these. It was my destiny, let this be my legacy. Horse Burnout Part 2. We're continuing the discussion on horse burnout and today I'm going to go into more detail about my findings regarding equine therapy organizations and how they measure up regarding the need for guidelines and accountability when it comes to horse care protocol. We're talking about what my research specifically highlighted about the equine therapy industry when it comes to horse care standards. As we begin, I want to point out that though this research project was focused on the equine therapy industry, I'm so excited that the results uh, can be helpful for all horse lovers and those who are caretakers of horses. For me, this research has resulted in some wonderful communications and feedback from people throughout the horse industry. And I'm excited to see how these findings can apply and be useful outside and inside of the equine therapy industry. Throughout this episode, please think about how this research could be useful for you and your equine organization or your herd at home and connect with me. I'd love to hear from you. Please connect at my website and that is crystalavera.com www.cry S H T A L A V E R A dot com. You can contact me directly on my website or you'll see my social media links. And if you want to send me a message directly on Facebook or connect on my Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter, that'd be great. What are your experiences with horse burnout? Does this discussion resonate with you? If you'd like to share a short audio clip made on your smartphone, please send it to me at averac001 at hawaii.rr.com with the subject line, Giving a Voice to the Horses audio clip, and I'll consider including it in a future podcast. Two of the most important aspects of this work for me are connecting to community and collaboration. So, hearing from you guys is really important to me. Let's dig in. 
Uh, this particular project was the first of my research projects on horse happiness, and it posed the question, do therapy horses burn out? There were 74 respondents from within the equine therapy industry. 52% were equine specialists. 60% were therapeutic riding instructors. Some were both equine specialists uh, with EGALA and therapeutic riding instructors. 13% of participants were mental health professionals on equine therapy teams and in some cases also certified as equine specialists. The vast majority of participants were EGALA or PATH certified. So just to give a little definition, a little description of EGALA and PATH. So EGALA is the Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association. This model is a therapy system where the horse is viewed as the therapist um, and it's non-ridden always. The horse's intuition is celebrated and acknowledged as the essential piece in equine therapy the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship International, or PATH International, offers specifically therapeutic riding lessons. There are other certifications within PATH um, that instructors can achieve. One in particular is, is driving. So there is more to it, but that's the basic definition of both EGALA and PATH. And again, the vast majority of participants were certified through EGALA and or PATH. It wasn't quite 50-50, but um, both were, e were almost equally represented. So this offered a lot of great opportunity to get insight from both organizations and then also be able to compare the two um, as the largest organizations that offer certification uh, within the equine therapy industry when it comes to horse care standards. So feedback from participants suggested that many believe the equine professional certifications should have more stringent requirements specifically regarding education and experience. Based on uh, the consistency of that piece of feedback, one of my recommendations after collecting data was that further inquiry into how equine professionals in the equine therapy industry uh, could be better prepared before becoming certified is one variable that could increase consistency in horse care standards and help reduce burnout in horses. And if you've listened to part one of this discussion, we talked a lot about the symptoms and causes of horse burnout and some strategies for alleviating it or preventing horse burnout. And we did talk about there the discovery that lack of consistency in horse handling throughout an organization is a major cause of horse burnout that many, uh, many observe. Another notable and consistent piece of feedback is that many therapy horses are also rescue horses. So they have often experienced cruel treatment at the hands of humans before being rescued and coming into an equine therapy program. Um, feedback indicates that these horses are more susceptible to being stressed based on an expectation of treatment they've received in the past and this was cited as something that needs more attention. So there was a recommendation in my conclusion of this project that also more inquiry on this subject and specifically with rescue horses as equine therapy horses should should be addressed more or the inquiry should be further made. I'd like to offer you some of the specific data. Burnout observed in therapy session type. So the question I asked was, in what type of therapy sessions do you observe burnout in therapy horses? And I asked participants to choose, it was a multiple choice question, I asked them to choose all that apply. Over 80% said they observed burnout in riding therapy sessions for the horses. 
during grooming and prep by volunteers, about 45% said they saw it here. About 30% observed burnout in equine-assisted psychotherapy, so that's unmounted. And around 25% said they see burnout in the equine-assisted learning, which is a sessions, which is another unmounted type of session and often will include uh, team building or uh, will be specifically working with corporations. And lastly, under 20% said they see burnout in horses after sessions. So overwhelmingly, burnout is observed in riding therapy sessions. So this question is important to the research because it shows that riding therapy may well be more stressful on horses than therapy where no riding is involved. And because of that, I made a recommendation for further inquiry to assess all the variables such as the potential for claustrophobia being felt by the horses, uh, with sidewalkers around, which may be causing stress. Also, the energy of each person, each person and potential for stress and anxiety with more people around the horse and the possible lack of choice the horse may have on whether to participate or not can be contributing to stress in a riding session as well. And then overwhelmingly, feedback said that Horses need to be able to choose whether to participate in any session. And if they don't have the option to say no, they don't want to participate in a therapy session of any kind, uh, participants consistently said that they noticed that that can be a potential cause of burnout or stress trigger. And most definitely, uh, I had recommended further research with a foundation in observing horses to find what the causes of burnout and riding therapy are. This subject, specifically around riding therapy and burnout, um, needs more research, where we could maybe measure biofeedback in the horses, um, really ascertain the variables that are causing burnout in riding therapy sessions. What we definitely know is that there are more people in close proximity to the horse in riding therapy sessions as a rule, depending on the physical ability. Uh, in my personal experience, sidewalkers are usually needed in riding therapy sessions. So that means the horse has a person potentially leading him or her and also may have a sidewalker on both the left and right side. And this could trigger claustrophobia depending on a person's energy or their own body language and sort of lack of awareness or understanding of how sensitive horses are to their energy. They could be causing stress in the horse and having this happen time and time again um, can cause long-term stress and really lead to true burnout. And just the fact that it's likely that the volunteers that are sidewalking are most likely different for the horse on any given day for any given session could very well be a factor. Those things deserve more research um, because of the amount of feedback from participants that says, hey, in riding therapy sessions, horses tend to burn out on a much larger scale and much more often um, than unmounted therapy or in other situations. Another question I asked participants was related to client population and the burnout observed with specific client populations. So with clients who have experienced trauma, 35.3% said they see burnout. With clients who have physical diagnoses, which indicates these would be clients that are participating in riding therapy sessions, 
52.9% uh, of participants said they see burnout. Participants say they see burnout with men and women. Both have the same response, 35.3%. Participants see burnout with children and teenagers. In fact, 67.6% .6 of participants see burnout with children and teenagers. So this question is a great accompaniment to the previous question regarding the need for further research on what causes burnout or what variables specifically cause burnout in writing therapy. I asked participants about support and standards by certifying organizations. Now this question did not offer the option for further comment and based on participant input it should have. So data reflects that PATH International provides some detailed guidelines as well as support on horse care standards whereas EGALA offers guidelines without specific details or follow-up support. So synthesis of the input from PATH and EGALA certified practitioners, which were the large majority of participants in this survey, uh, indicated that further discussion amongst the two certifying organizations with heavy emphasis on input from facilitators in the field could provide really valuable results regarding the standard of care and support offered to equine therapy practitioners and organizations. So what does that mean really? There are some guidelines and some follow-up support, but there is no accountability. There is no real ongoing support from a organization or a specialized team within a certifying organization um, to help that therapy organizations have a clear picture of horse care standards in, in equine therapy. It almost has become an afterthought. Now that is my personal opinion based on the data that I have collected and based on the input that I have received from professionals in the industry. The really encouraging thing that I discovered was that there are many individual equine therapy organizations that have developed or are developing their own horse care standard programs and if there was a way for them to be shared with each other as a template, also sharing would mean community connection, which it's very empowering, especially in this situation, because, again, as we talked about in part one uh, of this discussion, people who are doing this work are often overwhelmed because of the time and energy and commitment it takes, and that is in addition to their daily lives, full-time careers, families, because they're so committed to this work and feel so passionate about what they're doing and how important it is, they continue and they make it they make it happen. But the horses do tend to get overlooked when it comes to stress and um, long-term burnout. So more support from each other certainly more support from the certifying organizations would make all the difference. If there were templates available, um, if there was an accountability system included as part of the certifying process or the maintaining of certifications for individual organizations, that would bring the subject of horse care standards to the forefront and it would make it a priority for everyone and this is something that really needs to needs to shift 
This research project showed that invaluable information is available through operators in the field and there really is a common desire for more standards, guidelines, and support when it comes to horse health and happiness in equine therapy. Higher standards for certifying horse professionals in the field of equine therapy was um, a need that was a common observation. And the feeling that standards should be provided with follow-up support with the perspective that horse care is an objective subject dependent on key variables was one of the most important outcomes of this research. One key observation was the need for more inquiry and ongoing inquiry regarding horse care standards and equine therapy. There's a real strong recommendation from my perspective for a team effort focused on uniting operators, facilitators, and certifying organizations by creating a mission statement based on a desire for unity. Horses need consistent movement, a simple diet with no grain, and a natural lifestyle to thrive. Um, Ulcers and, and other health issues are a symptom of a less than natural lifestyle seen in the equine therapy industry as well as the horse industry in general uh, due to humans treating horses like humans rather than providing lifestyle and care based on the way the horse was designed to live. This finding prompted me to create a 12-month ebook. It's a digital tracking guide that's really simple and intended to be efficient that you can download for free on my website. Um, it utilizes some key findings in my research as far as the needs for basic horse care standards with the goal of having healthy, stress-free, happy horses. And by using it, it's you can incorporate it into a busy lifestyle and you'll be able to tweak the areas of your own horse care program based on the findings of my research and then assess over time if if the changes that you're making are helping or if maybe you need to consider other changes. That is available again for free on my website at crystalavera.com. If you look at the top menu of my website you'll see free and you'll see a drop down menu and then just click on that free ebook. Another core finding that I want to reiterate is that horses are often not allowed to choose not to participate. So this was actually one of the things that was unexpected. Uh, this was not something that I expected to see uh, from participants and this was something that they inserted. This was not based on multiple choice question or something that I asked them in a very specific way. This finding was something that on a consistent basis participants inserted or wrote in on their own as far as one of the important things that they see that does cause burnout and one of the important things that if honored can help horses to uh, be able to get past burnout and heal or prevent the burnout in horses in the, in the first place. So in my opinion, the consistency of these observations from those who utilize that strategy of giving a, a choice to the horse every time uh, and shows positive outcomes for the horse's health and happiness does make it worthy of further inquiry. I want to mention horsesandhumans.org. Uh, they are an organization focused on scientific research of equine therapy and how humans and horses are affected with the goal to support positive outcomes and should be contacted for potential partnership and further research on the subject of, of horse care standards um, of therapy horses. I was really excited to find them throughout this research. Also, Ilka Parent is a really, really wonderful resource and she is doing incredible work and she has many, many years of experience in equine therapy and is doing some really important work 
around having horses who are not burnt out. Um, her article on instrumentalizing horses was one of one of my resources for this particular research that we're talking about today. She now has an annual symposium, and it's called A Horse is a Horse, of course. And then she produces a compendium uh, of books published um, or at least available through Amazon. I highly recommend that you look up Ilka's work and the compendiums if you can't make it to one of her symposiums and learn more about the important work that, that she's doing for horses as well. This podcast is made possible because of listeners like you. If you'd like to donate as little as $1 per month, please visit my website, crystalavera.com. That's C-R-Y-S-H-T-A-L-A-V-E-R-A.com. And click on Be a Patron. You'll see it in the top menu of my website. If you'd like to dig deeper and you want to join me and create a lasting transformation in your relationship with your horse while supporting this podcast, see my third tier patron option for $21 per month where you'll get all the benefits of being a patron as well as a subscription to my transform course. Above all else, this podcast is for the horses. Together, we make wonderful things possible. Horses in life I have been blessed with these It was my destiny Let this be my legacy